most of you know me for flying big expensive ships like the Balgorn, you can add the Stratios and Ortus to that mix as well. Now this ship here is exactly the opposite. The Stabil Fleet is one of the one of the cheaper cruisers, but its price to performance ratio is actually pretty amazing. It's one of the best ships that you can get in the game. And if you ask me, the Stabil Fleet is the best cruiser in the game. You can do a lot of things with this ship that uh, make other expensive ships blush. So uh, now I know, I know Mimotar ships are made from duct tape. They're rusty. For example, this ship doesn't even doesn't even have uh, working life support systems. So the crew inside of the Stabil Fleet have to wear big jackets to keep warm in space because you know space is cold well then enough of me trying to make jokes let's just jump in uh, in the fight and let's see what the stabber can do Warp drive okay i have adjusted my orbit now i haven't been flying a ship that uses projectile turrets in i think five months so uh, I might be a little bit rusty myself. I guess I have something in common with Mimotar ships. First target for today, another rusty Mimotar ship. We have a Rupture. Both ships are around the same category. Both are tier six. Both are basically actually very similar ships. I like the Rupture a lot. And personally, I expect the Rapture to be to be buffed or to get a tier 9, tier 10 counterpart in the future. Now this Stabber Fleet is armor tanked and I kind of messed up with the propulsion. I should have went with a afterburner, but I think a micro drive will work as well. This Rapture seems to be a tanky one. As you can see, my armor repairs are keeping up with the damage. I have to change my orbit a little bit. Stabber has good falloff range. So I can orbit at 17, 16 kilometers. That should be outside of the range of the rupture. And as you can see, I did manage to lower my incoming damage. Now my repairers are fully repairing the armor. The Rapture is now into armor. They lost shield. My opponent was a shield tank. Well, it is still a shield tank. While this Stabber Fleet is a armor tank. I can now orbit without the Mike Web Drive. The Stabber Fleet is actually very quick. One of the fastest cruisers in the game. While the Rapture is slow, so I can orbit them at this range even without the mic warp drive running. They are now in hull. Now I can go and approach, and that was a nice last hit. They have been destroyed. And well, that was one expensive Rapture. One of the more expensive Raptures that I have seen. 600 million is not bad. Well, that was a nice first target with the Stabber Fleet today. Let's wait out the timer and we can go towards the next target. Okay, preparing myself for warp. And now in warp. Okay, overview is ready. I usually change the build depending on the target. Sometimes I go with the mic warp drive, sometimes I go with the afterburner. Depends on the you know, depends on the situation and what's what's happening and what's going on. Our next target is a cyclone command. Now cyclones are known to be 
to be fast. So I'm testing out the Cyclone's speed just to see if they are using a mic web drive or if they are using a afterburner. It would look like that I am able to maintain range, so I will go and orbit at my optimal range. Well then, uh, it looks like the Cyclone Command is not interested in the Ortus. The Cyclone Command is not interested in the Bellicos. But the Cyclone Command is interested in my poor Stabber fleet. Well, okay, challenge accepted. Now, are my armor repairs going to withstand the rapid missiles? Looks like so far it's holding out quite well. They are trying to approach, but the ship is just a little bit too fast. I am maintaining 17 km range. They 100% have webs so I must not get webbed or else I am I would be in actual trouble if if they have webs on me so at the moment everything looks to be stable looks like they really want me dead but that's kinda that's kinda difficult Okay, luckily they have a Nosferatu, not a neutralizer. They lost the shield a long time ago. Now they are into into hull. I will say this, that Cyclone Command was tanky. I would say that they have one large shield booster based on how much shield they repair. My armor holding out very well, capacitor is also in a excellent shape and they have been destroyed, nice. That was a nice, nice kill. Now let me... Let's not shoot the friendly, okay, today we're not, today I'm trying not to shoot at any blues, okay, trying to, you know, you know what I mean, I think most of you know. Alright, well, let's go towards the next target, Staber Fleet, Fleet, well, okay, sounds interesting. We are warping towards the location. I warped a little bit late because I wasn't aligned for some reason. That is my mistake. We have a hurricane. Alright. Tier 8 cruiser. That hurricane is a little bit far away. Not a good position because we had intel that the hurricane is with artillery. We are basically in the optimal range of the artillery cannons, but I believe the afterburner and the stabber's very small signature radius help at not taking full damage. And well, I did sneak myself in close proximity to the hurricane, and well, at this range the the medium artillery is not going to do a lot of damage on any of our ships. Well then, we have the hurricane webbed, pointed and scrambled. They are not going to go anywhere. They are slowly losing shields. I'm orbiting with afterburner on because I don't want to risk getting hit. Even I know the I know the fact that at this range the artillery cannons cannot hit, but 
I don't trust my own luck, so let's just keep the afterburner up and running. So far so good. The hurricane is now into into hole. Actually, the hurricane has been into hole for some time now. And they should be destroyed any moment now. I did stop shooting because my my friends there needed the kill mill, so let's give them the kill mill. Nice, there we go. The hurricane has been destroyed. That was a fun that was a fun kill actually. Okay. Now we can prepare to go towards the next target. Warp drive active. This is going to be uh, a very funny one, I think. Yeah, it, it's going to be a very funny one. Warping towards that anomaly. Guess what ship we have tackled? Or should I say guess what ship has tackled us? An Ortus. Well then, someone is about to be... Someone is about to get... Let me... Warp towards... There we go. Nice and close to the Ortus. There we go. Wept, pointed... Well, actually, not pointed. Wept, scrambled. Dual scrambled. And webbed. Arthur's was already into low shield. Now they are into armor. The bomber. I think the bomber did warp out. However, I might be wrong. The Arthur's is now into into hole. Three stabber fleet in a fleet. And of course we have we have a scorpion that caught the Ortus. Well, that was a nice kill. That's nice loot and very nice teamwork to everyone. That was uh, that was a lovely Ortus kill with tier 6 cruisers and a tier 9 battleship. Nice. I will leave the loot for uh, for them to to decide what we get. At the moment, I think I don't need Isk that much. Uh, however, more dual Legion debris, yeah, can be very tasty. Can be very, very tasty. Warp drive active. All right, well, let's go towards the next target. I'm warping towards that gate. This time, I did scan. Let's see who the target is, and it is a tier 6 MOA, oh, okay, another tier 6 cruiser. Well, I believe it's it's fair, this is a tier 6 cruiser, although uh, starting from tier 6, I kinda don't feel the tier difference between the other ships, because uh, even this Taber fleet, as you could see, can easily take out an Ortus, for example, so it really depends on the pilot skill okay there is the 
Moam, I have the afterburner on. This Moa is already into armor. That's kind of weird. Well, looks like this is going to be the... Looks like it's going to be an easy target. Oh wait, a armor tank Moa. Well, that's that's interesting. I wasn't aware that a Moa had bonus on armor. I thought the Moa had a bonus on shield. 4% per skill level. 4% resistance on all damage types per skill level on shield. Although, for example, for some reason, this Moa has bonus on armor. Okay, that's fine. That was a nice, that was a nice kill. Let's take a look at the loot. And now let's warp out and wait out the timer. You know, I'm actually having a lot of fun in this ship. This is one of those ships that I can fly without worrying. Usually uh, when I fly my expensive cruisers I play a lot um, I guess I play a lot more careful a lot more tactical and I think about every situation five times in this ship well I just go tackle and have fun and here I have tackled a Oracle 2 they have been scrambled I have a tracking disruptor and a afterburner. Perfect combination against that ship. Or not? Well, looks like they have stabs. Well then, time to develop a new strategy to catch that oracle. I'm not giving up that easily. And, well, uh, after... After a little bit of waiting, the oracle warped right at the same spot where they left so they have been immediately tackled immediately scrambled this time they're not going to be able to warp away we have a lot of a lot of points on the on the oracle at the moment and a lot of scramblers let me just go within let me just go really close to that ship, because why not? The Stabber is actually a very small cruiser. I'm surprised how small this ship is. And, well, Oracle 2 has been destroyed. Very nice. Very nice kill. Let's go towards the next one. Okay, sorry for the weird cut. Let's go towards the next target. I believe the next target has already been tackled. So I have to hurry up not to miss out on the fun. Okay, we have a prophecy, and it is a red prophecy. That means it's going to be extra juicy. Let's go and quickly orbit them at my optimal range, which is 6 kilometers. They have been scrambled, webbed. I will say, this prophecy appears to be tanky. You can see a lot of, a lot of drones on grid. And the prophecy has been destroyed. That was a nice kill. I did see a Tristan there. A very nice, very nice little frigate. Okay, warping towards the next target.
and we have a prophecy another prophecy but this time I kinda messed up I shouldn't have warped because well the prophecy was too far away and they have warped towards the station or towards the gate so I did mess that one up but a little bit later and the same prophecy did actually return they have been tackled and at the moment I am warping towards the location there is the prophecy but they are already in low hole and I am very far away over 100 kilometers Okay, let's go towards the next one. They are located at the Serpentis base. It is a battle cruiser. I believe it's a Oracle 2. Not quite sure what they are doing at the base, but we are about to find out. They are right in the middle. Hmm. Looks like it's time for the insurance prevention service to do their job and well Let's do my job. I guess They have been tackled Scrambled not quite sure what they were trying to do, but I believe the insurance prevention service uh, did respond to the to the call in in the right moment Oracle 2 now into hall. And they are going down. They are going down. Uh, yeah, they, uh, they definitely. They definitely did try to do the insurance fraud thing. Well, nice. And yep, that was an empty. empty wreck. Empty ship. And there is the. There is the kill. Well then, that was nice. Let me warp out and wait out the criminal timer. Warp drive active. Well then, uh, I have to admit, I actually had more fun in this ship than I had in some of my faction ships. The Staber fleet is one amazing little ship. And I plan to fly a lot more uh, normal ships, a lot more non-faction ships. You will see some of them very soon. But the Stubber Fleet will be one of my main PvP cruisers from now on. And, well, I will be trying to do some very funny stuff with the Stubber Fleet. Overall, as you, as you could see, uh, I trust this ship a lot. And I believe uh, I'll be able to get some very nice fights and very nice skills with it. Well then, with that being said, hope that you enjoyed, hope that you had fun. And stay safe, fly safe, and I'll see you next time.